All right. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to episode 26. Hola. Uh, things might get freaky. Jamie's boob touched my arm a few times <laughs> moving up to the table. So, uh. <laughs> okay. Yeah. You know, Saturday, <laughs> date night. Mm, that was a weird sound. <laughs> Anyways, um, I like your outfit. Thanks. You can't see my pants, though. I know. My pants are cute. I doubt this. All right. You need to get up and show your butt. <laughs> oh. No. Okay, fine. Do it. <laughs> no, I don't want to stand up. Do it for the gram. No, this is not the gram. You're oh, red, aren't is. you? What? You're turning red. Am Are you I? blushing? I don't know. I'm not looking at you. Because I can't talk to you. <laughs> what? I know. I hate I can't wait to get a new setup so we can face each other. Because when I do this, the mic doesn't That's pick anything up. So. beard is in the No, mic. it has nothing to do with the beard. So, what is um, it? Anyways, guys, um, for those of you that follow along. Let's make this along, quick. I am hungry. I know. For those of you that <laughs> follow along in our local, um, it's been a crazy oh, week. Run. So, uh, for those of you that don't know, um, uh, let's see, did it start Thursday morning? Middle Thursday morning when I left for work? No, it was Wednesday. Wednesday morning. So, we had an active shooter downtown Paso Robles. I was gonna say How Robles. Long have you lived here? I, I was gonna say Robles, like the news does. Um, <laughs> Paso Robles, um, that was um, literally in the middle of the downtown. Um, the police station, uh, police officer got ambushed, um, shot in the face. He is now. I think you know a better update. Is he's he in still? He's in serious um, he condition, but he's gonna live. I mean, he's okay. gonna be okay. From what I understand, the bullet is still lodged in there. <sighs> Fuck. Um, but it started at 3 a.m. on Wednesday. So, well, actually, I think shots were heard around midnight, but it's not uncommon in the, our area up in North County to hear gunshots and fireworks at random times of the night. Yeah. Um, but, uh, and not like in a scary way, like in a people are just bored, probably <laughs> shooting at beer cans, um, yeah. drinking. So, <laughs> um, but uh, then at 3 a.m., shots were fired at the police station. Um, uh, officers happened to be in their units and we're getting out and that's when they got shot um so literally it was just a crazy manhunt literally i'm at work and it's probably 3 33 45 maybe and one of our neighbors so at one of the warehouses that's close to us um our neighbor stopped and said hey there's an active shooter downtown which is where you know close to the fairground so um he could have made his way over Anywhere down, and once you hear the end of the story, you'll be like, "Wow, he went a long ways." And uh, but anyway, so we locked all our things up. Um, he's downtown doing his thing. He's hiding from the cops. The next day, I get to well, work. Not so much the next day, still. So and um, so, like uh, he was saying, he this this person, you know, the suspect's running all over. You know, they're just on this <coughs> crazy chase trying to find this guy. Unfortunately, um, he an uh, innocent person was killed. Um, there was somebody over at the rail, uh, the train station area, I believe, or something like that. I don't want to give the wrong information, but innocent person was happened to be in the wrong place at the wrong time. So we got an officer that shot, uh, innocent, you know, person that's killed, like that, that was shot point close range to the head or whatever. So the guy's still running. <laughs> Guy is still running, and he's spotted at a gas station because they staged. Remember, they like staged a whole area trying to block him in, and he wasn't in that area apparently because the next thing we, the next morning, there was footage of him at the gas station getting energy drinks and snacks. So, well, that's what I was gonna say. Is the next morning I get to work and it's still going on. (laughs) Oh, okay. So it's um, been 24 hours. The shit's still going on. I drive by all of. Um, our target area is blocked off on the other side of the road and I'm at work it's still going on and then just to tell you the length of it it's still going on I get home and it doesn't end till maybe 435 that day yeah so uh, yeah about a d- about a day and a half uh, this guy was um, escaping nice. every everyone and I think at this time, because it had been going on so long, the whole community was invested. At one point, our police scanner, our local police scanner, the app had 14,000 people uh, from the East Coast. It was all over the news, uh, uh, all over the country. At this point, our community was so invested into what was happening right underneath our noses. Um, And it was just surreal to have something like that happen in this area, but have it go on for so long. 
Um, and it ended in uh, him going uh, down with a fight. Um, and um, he unfortunately was able to hit two more police officers, one in the leg, one in the stomach. I have not heard about the one in the stomach. They're have both you? okay. They're, They're both full okay. recovering. Okay. Thank goodness, um, yeah. But at points, we had SWAT, we had FBI, we had tactical get turned over to FBI at one point. Um, every, police stations from South County, it was... And North County, because uh, one of the cops from... Oh, King, oh, AG, no, never mind. It's a, it was an AG cop. Yeah. Um, so it was... This week has just been um, insane, so to say the least. <laughs> yeah, it was a lot, you know. It was, um, it was definitely just unsettling that he was nowhere to he kept getting away um and hiding out um you know and just having so many you know in agencies on this person and it was like where in the heck is this dude so it was a little nerve-wracking to have to you know head into paso and stuff knowing that this guy is could be anywhere um and when they you know i was actually on my way to paso that's where i my tanning business is and we live in Tascadero, about 10 minutes away and i was driving and i knew right away because all of a sudden all the law enforcement was just hauling ass to um the opposite way of me so i was like oh they found him you know and um i wasn't able to listen in on the scanner just because i was uh, taking clients but um i could just tell it was intense you know between his text messages to me and my um good friend ashley you know she was keeping me informed like detail to detail to detail and i could just you know you can't tell someone's voice from the text but i can hear the anxiety like in her voice just trying to tell me what keep me informed what was going on and um but yeah but the guy sounds like definitely mental issues you know um he had a facebook account that 2018 had a lot of uh scary posts um, he was so definitely unstable for sure. So yeah. it's just sad. It's sad that it ended that way. I know that's not how the officers wanted it to end, you know, but um, he was shooting at them, so they had to do what they had to do. So just crazy world. Yeah, yeah. You know, and this reality check, again, I talked about it on my own Instagram that, you know, it's it's our quiet little community. So for us, it's like, holy crap, this is yeah. happening here. But at the same time, holy crap, this can happen here, you know, and comes down to like school shootings and you know the you know active shooter situations i mean can happen anywhere and um it was a wake-up call for our community for sure you know to uh experience it firsthand in our own backyard yeah insane so um yeah that's uh the roller coaster that we've been on here in paso robles the last uh few days so um glad it's over word um yeah anything else um what else? Did, did we do anything else? What did we do this week? No, I've been tanning. I've been, <laughs> been so busy with back in the, getting my groove back in the tanning studio. Between tanning and clothes. It's I know. been a busy week for me, which is good. Can't complain. Um, no, it was pretty low key. One kid was gone all week uh, camping or at a cabin with friends. That going on, so we were pretty low key. I don't know. I don't. Why don't you uh, tell everybody about your. Um, uh, Guy that came up to you and was like, "You both are hot." Oh no! Where's Haley when I need her? She was with me. Oh my gosh, just some dude. I think he's my neighbor in the my new complex that I'm tanning out. <laughs> yeah. I was just standing with one of my clients and we were getting ready to. We were just chatting. I always, I always try and walk all my clients out to the car, but this is one of my close friends who I love, and we were just chatting, catching up, and this guy came out of nowhere and was kind of odd like he was you could tell he wanted to say something so i was like, okay he's gonna interrupt like trying to get in, trying to get in the circle like, yeah not like, too close like, but standing i just gotta say y'all you all are hot or you guys are hot or something <laughs> and i was like okay thanks <laughs> it's just random just people are weird i get weird stuff in like my dms all the time too oh i'm sure well, i read them to you sometimes i know it's how it's i oh i don't open them because i don't want them to see that i've seen what they wrote i can just see the highlight of what they're starting to say i'm like eh. We're just not going to go there and delete. <laughs> so funny. People are weird. You know, people don't give a shit. No. Um, anyways, yeah. It's been a, um, a weird week for sure. Um, so I wanted to hit some th- hit on something real quick. Um, we are going to keep this episode short because we do actually get a um, date day slash night to ourselves. Um, and, um, yeah, we'll be having some dinner with some friends tonight, and little one will be going with his Mimi for the first time in what feels like forever. It definitely feels like forever for her. <clears throat> so, yeah. All right, so, um, I wanted to 
get your um, view real quick on the saddest Pixar movies. Like, which ones have the saddest um, part in them? Up and Toy Story 3. Toy Story 3? Mm-hmm. Okay, so for me, I really, I know, I heard that Inside Out was kind of sad, but I didn't really pay attention to the movie right. like I should have. Um, Coco, when Coco came out, it hit differently because it came out, it was it right after Grand Pass well, or before? Coco, I don't even see Coco. Oh, there it is. That one definitely, okay, that, that was up there too. But see, Coco and, is Moana not Pixar? Moana's just Disney. Oh, okay, because Coco and Moana both have those sad grandma factors in them that <laughs> oh yeah Moana does huh right yeah. at the beginning so definitely sad parts in those two Coco Up but is Up always just gets me like that uh, first 10 minutes is just killer Up hits different than any of the others because yeah. it's the first time like Ugh. the transgression of, of and then for the... me I always say the Toy Story 3 and I don't know if everybody can't relate I don't think to that unless like I don't know as a mom for me it's it's the mom view at the end when she walks in the room and He's all his stuff is packed up because he's leaving the college and he pans all his toys over. Like, oh, it gets me every time. And very, I'm not no, even a very emotional no, person no, no. in movies. No. What? That's not the part. For what? When they all are going to melt and <laughs> Yes. <laughs> and they're going to the go part. down. That, <laughs> it's that's toy. scary and sad. Like, that gets my anxiety up. Because they're holding but each no, other's hands, the, looking at each other, like, the, this is it. I know. <laughs> that is to sad. Go. That is sad. But like, when the oh mom walks God. in his room and we've grown up with him, yeah. like, we've watched him grow up with his toys. And so when she's in the room and just standing there and she gets, like, oh, you know, sentimental and walks, you know, watches him drive away. And then when he gives his toys over to the little girl. That gets me every time, and I don't even usually get emotional in movies after I've seen them once. I know what's going to happen, but... Yeah, so uh, so you know in The Lion King when Mufasa died, mm-hmm. he, even though this isn't Pixar, when he dies, it just shows him falling into the stampede, and then it shows Simba walking up afterwards, mm-hmm. and then like lifting his paw or pushing his head, whatever. Mm-hmm. So that's sad. Well, if you've seen The Good Dinosaur, um, there's a part in oh. it... Oh, wow, he's falling over the cliff. Where the fucking <laughs> dad is hanging on the cliff, and he looks up at the sun, and he's staring into his son's <laughs> goddamn soul, and the waves just fucking crush him yeah, and take him sad. away. Like, they didn't even, like, okay, you can use your imagination, this is what happened. They're like, nope, we're going to give it to you straight. And that this happens motherfucker... in um, one of those other ones where you think that they died if they ended up not. I think it's Mulan. Somebody goes over a cliff. And Mulan. Oh, it's one of them. It's one of the... Or it's a second Mulan. It's something. And I remember I was watching in Kid Carrot Give, and the girls were all into it. Corey, like, loves this movie, I think. But I just remember I wasn't really watching it. All of a sudden, I'm like, what the heck? And, like, this person just flying over. I think it might have even been the guy. I don't even know. He ends up living. It's not like he died. Huh. But I was like, oh, my gosh. He just flew that. over a cliff. It might have been one of the sequels to something. I don't know. Don't quote me on any of that. Um, Wally is good. It has some sad parts, but not, like, really, really sad. Um, Cars 3, <clears throat> to me, when... Oh, with Doc? No, Doc was in the second well, it was one. was in, like, his memory in that one or something? Oh, it was, but to me, when... Uh, and I guess it wasn't sad, but it was more breathtaking, like, took your breath away, is when Lightning McQueen crashed, oh. and you're like, oh, shit. Like, and then the the whole story of him just being, you know, his time is, is, is really over the prime, you know, whatnot, and kind of passing on the torch... But not no like sad parts like that. Monsters Inc. Really, I, I mean, I guess when uh, um, Boo goes to open the door and Sully's not there, that's sad. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, Finding Nemo, the mom dies at the very beginning, but it's kind of more shocking because the e- I think the eel or shark or whatever fucking ate her. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah. Like you watch her get eaten. I'm pretty sure it like shoots into the. I I've seen it. I don't remember, it. though. I don't watch a lot of these over and over again, only certain ones. Like, I've watched Coco numerous times. I'm pretty sure she Toy was trying to save... i numerous times. I'm pretty sure Nemo, she was trying to save all the eggs, protect them, and... Um, yeah. Fucking eel. I, I think it's an eel comes out and just fucking... <laughs> oh, yeah. Baits her on a hook. <laughs> uh, one of the more recent ones that we watched was um, Onward. To me, that one hit me because I, I didn't see it coming. It's about the brothers. Um... And onward, it was. If, if you haven't seen it, spoiler alert. But um, oh yeah, cover your ears if you haven't seen it. At the end, basically, these brothers are looking for uh, their dad, and they basically have this 
magical spell that they can see him one more time. Well, to make it make it quick and short, um, uh, one of the brother, the younger brother, lets his older brother. The younger brother never met his dad. He's only seen pictures of him, and the older brother only knew him for a short while. So the younger brother really never got to know him other than through vicariously through his pictures and family or whatnot. So at the end, the younger brother um, instead lets the older brother to go see his dad one last time because the younger brother, it, it all hits at once. The younger brother realizes that his older brother was his dad and his father figure growing up. Father figure, not his dad for real. They're going to get confused. And that's why like, he's going to be like, what? That's why I said father figure right after dad. Mm. <laughs> God. <laughs> um, and so that hit you because having, you know, three younger brothers myself, it just, you can kind of feel, you know, me and Sean never grew up with a dad. Um, uh, Brandon didn't know his dad. And Jared had a dad. Yay. <laughs> one for three, one for four. <laughs> just made me think of that meme when you're, when you have different dads. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> and everybody looks different. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, Nothing uh, wrong with that. <laughs> but it's but it's a good it's a really cute movie it, it's really good and it it's um they did a really good job of tying it all together at the end so even the last Toy Story four when uh, uh, Woody uh, says bye all the toy when it's a beautiful backdrop of like the carnival lights mm. and they all say bye to each other one last time yeah that one's really sad so you just want to talk about depressing movies no that I was just your, that was your Subject of the day. De- depressing parts, you whore. <laughs> Hold on. Yeah, depressing Debbie parts. Now go jump off These are all cliff. good. Just kidding. So, <laughs> all right. So if you had to pick the top two, would you say Coco and Up or Up in Toy Story 3? Um, I would still go Up in Toy Story 3. Up in Toy Story Coco's 3. Coco is a close tie second, yeah. Um, I would say Up 2, Up number 1. Um, yeah, I guess... Well, what's your second? Either the grandma part and Coco. That was just brutal because we or, had just lost Graham right yeah. around that time. When your mom took Cruz to see in the theater, we're like, oh, no. That's right. <laughs> it's a bad idea. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'd have to say that. Um, up or Coco. The good times for it wasn't sad. It was more shocking. Like, okay, this motherfucker just got murdered by the water. I just remember how cute right around Coco time, too, and Graham passed. Cruz was playing his little ukulele, ukulele and he would sing that yeah. Remember Me song, make everybody cry, just drop of a hat. Yeah. <laughs> I guess the part in Finding Dory, too, that was actually a really good sequel. Um, sometimes sequels don't always pan out, but when she her, her, she was losing her memory so much as a kid and, you know, the, the parents, like, losing her and having her just, that was, it was kind of sad to watch as a little kid, you know, a little fish, <laughs> but going through losing her memory... <laughs> I don't remember. Um, I, I kind of remember. But. So, uh, and I, I don't want to spend another topic on it because it um, there's so many of them. But uh, if you have Disney Plus, they have all the Pixar shorts, the Disney and Pixar shorts on there. Um, they just came out with um, the newest one called Out, which is really good. Um, but one of my favorite ones that gets me every time is one that's called Float. And it's about this kid who is different, and he literally... Uh, the dad doesn't know why it's there's no dialogue except for one part in the whole show and it's the one where the kid is able he has his power where he's able mm-hmm. to fly and float and obviously um, when he was young the dad saw him uh, realize that we can't call in public you can't play the playground people will see you and freak out and you're too different and so finally you know when he then they go for a walk he ties into a leash and puts a bunch of rocks in his backpack <laughs> but he takes a backpack off um but they get to a playground and the kid is like so antsy he wants to go in and the dad's looking at the playground kind of like dr- daydreaming like oh, i wish my i wish we could go in the playground he looks down and the kid's de- you know out playing floating in the <laughs> playground parents and kids are kind of like screaming and not sure and then um he runs in grabs the kid and he's trying to pull him out of the playground the kid is crying and kicking and screaming and the dad yells at the top of his lungs why can't you just be normal and the way that they tie the music into it and the the, the kid just automatically floats slowly back down to the ground oh, it's so puts, his, now. puts his <laughs> puts his hood guy. puts his hood on and you just see a tear um come down the kid's face and the dad realizes like you know what's the What's the point? Like, why why can't, you know, he be different? Why does he have to be normal? 
and then it ends up being you know him getting along with all the kids and it, they tie it into a good a feel good story mm-hmm. but it's one of the it's probably the best short that I've or one of my favorites that I've seen um, Pixar and Disney do yeah so. that's a good one the only one I didn't understand was the one where he turns into like a pork bun. <laughs> they, oh, that one's weird. And it's called Bao. I need to. I, I need to look at. I, yeah, because the think pork buns are called Chasso Bows. I think we saw it in a movie <laughs> she theater, didn't know. and it's there's serious moments, and Jamie's fucking sitting here giggling. Like, I also <laughs> just ate up. Like, <laughs> it does. You know. And I was like, oh, it makes me hungry because I like Chasso Bows, <laughs> the pork buns. If you've ever seen like white, and they have the the like usually it's like the barbecue pork inside the middle. Um, but she eats it and then it, like comes back. It's weird. I still don't understand it at all. But... I need to watch that one again then. So yeah, and then <laughs> someone break it down because I don't get it. Uh, there's another one called Loop that's really good. It's about a boy who's at a camping. I won't get through the whole details, but he gets stuck in a raft and has to take um, a, an autistic girl with him. Um, as his partner on oh, his boating really raft. Oh, that one's really sweet too, actually. And um, that just shows you that's a really good one. The, the heart that he, you know, he builds and, and the patience and all that. That's a really good one. That's called Loop. I think what I love about those is I have a few friends with um, uh, special needs children that it, it's relatable. Like I just kind of gives you insight into what their life is, you know. And so um, they do it in such a soft and caring way, yes, though. In these, exactly. in these films uh, yeah it's really they're yeah they're pretty touching for sure yeah, yeah they, they tug at the heartstrings for sure so and then um, the most recent one that you showed me though that you were just saying was called out like that out. one surprised me it was definitely um you know uh one for families that have to talk with their kids if they watch it you know just because um it's a interracial gay couple mm-hmm. you know and one's in the closet still with his family and the other one is out and he really wants him to you know tell his family and um it was i really liked it i love yeah. that they're taking these routes and really putting this stuff that's everyday life out there for people to you know it's got to you know and i'm, I'm glad i'm glad you said that they're take, taking these routes because some people will be like oh it's such a big risk for them to and i'm like it's not a risk it's that's what it's is reality. a part of yeah like it's life <laughs> it's if you are against it then you're a fucking you're asshole. Problem. You're an asshole. So it's <laughs> yeah, like you're the problem. <laughs> you know. So yeah. I love. Uh, yeah, I love that they're doing that, and it's the way that they make him realize, and, and the conversation he has with his mom, um, is uh, they do it in such a good, touching way. So, mm-hmm. um, and the animation is different in that way. It's, it's very it, different. It's, it's not. 2D. It's not. It's not pretty to look at. It's not like a good like the other ones he's been talking about are really visually nice movies. I feel like too, except for the. Chasso Bao one. That one is <laughs> weird too. But um, these one, this one was, the, you know, the animation. It looked more like pastel, like mm. 2D pastel like type. They weren't like, yeah, even like the characters in it weren't. It looked more artsy than it did uh, yeah. animation. I go, well, I don't know. Which is but. fine, but their point was made and it yeah, was um, exactly, yeah. definitely um, touching to me, I thought, you know, for sure. Especially because, you know, that's something people are struggling with every day. So. Um, another one is called, <laughs> I know, another one is called Pearl. And it's about this um, uh, little ball, pink ball of yarn, who gets a job <laughs> as an intern an at a, at an office job, but um, you know, she decides that if she wants to be fit in, she has to be part of the guys, you know, because um, it's all men that work at the office, and um, so she, you know. Starts to talk like them. Let's talk about going and getting drinks after work. She, <laughs> the bop, yarn starts to. She starts to tell funny jokes, and you know, but she puts on a black suit to look like them, and they and they start to accept her more and more. So she's part of the guys now. Um, and then a new intern shows up, and it's a maybe I don't know. It's a yellow thing of yarn or something different. And she sees the hardship and the sadness that she's going through, not being part of the crew, um, and. Uh, without forgetting or, or fucking it up, she basically gets her involved and she switches her ways to we don't have to be so inclusive or I guess exclusive to you know feel like you know the clip type be thing. yourself be yourself and it really everybody at the end just turns they're, they're all friends and, and they there's no um, exclusivity they allow everyone and so it's a good one they they kind of turn yeah, they it put into weird stuff though I mean like the people look normal like normal people and then there's these balls of yarn <laughs> so yeah. that they, their, their thought process whoever writes these is interesting to me like why a ball of yarn why not just have them look 
or be a woman. <laughs> you know? I, I think that that is to um, to maybe subconsciously portray such a big contrast that there is in yeah. the workforce um, when it comes to you know, equal opportunity or whatnot in, in some in some spaces. Yeah. Um, you know, I think well, if it's, so what do people need to look up just like so they can see all these that we've told them just about? you can go to YouTube and sometimes they have them on YouTube but huh. Disney Plus has all of the Pixar oh. shorts so there you go now specifically we'll with that. Pearl Loop Out and um, Float so Float is my number one so I thought that'd be fun you know Pixar movies we talked about the sad parts but they ultimately always end up um, they usually happy. have a happy, feel-good so, ending, yeah. you know, and not in a cheesy way, like, oh, of course, it's yeah. predictable. I mean, it would be horrible if, like, they ended it with, you know, the kid comes out to his mom and his family disowns him. I mean, that would be reality, too, I guess, but yeah. they try to make it stay happy. <laughs> like, even even The Incredibles, they do a good job of, you know, the mom starts to be the superhero because the dad just is so brute, powerful, like, he kind of, you know, is... is mm. um, and they do a good job of, of uh, the masculinity of him kind of accepting that, you know, the mom can do, get the job done too and, and he can, you know, take a back seat. So, yeah. anyways, um, I thought that'd be fun. So, in a depressing kind of way. <laughs> yeah, shut up. <laughs> no, so, what's the best part? What's your favorite? What's the saddest part? <laughs> yes. Oh, All here's right. my funny meme. Let's get into Jamie's. And meme. I got this from Anissa's. Instagram story, I think, and it says, do you know what 50 Cent did when he got hungry? <laughs> and then it, it says 58, and it's the number 58, <laughs> you know, 5, 8, 58, <laughs> please don't delete me. <laughs> do you know what 50 Cent did when he got hungry? I'm surprised you got that. <laughs> 58. <laughs> that made me laugh out loud, God literally. Damn it. <laughs> um, all right, let's... Uh... Let's get it. This is a quote or a meme quote? Quote. Well, Oscar. Um, there's only one thing in the world worse than being talked about, and that is not being talked about. Oscar <laughs> Wilde. That's so, a good one. I like that. Yeah, I just like that one. It's true. You know, if people aren't talking about you, then what's going on? Yeah, that's a good one. I like that. All right. Mine are um, quick. I have three of them, but they're not deep, so that's why I added... Oh, thank goodness. Three it's of them. already heavy so. enough. Oh, kidding. shut up. <laughs> Don't touch me. Um, all right. Um, all three of them have to do with travel. Um, all right. If you think adventure is dangerous, try routine. It's lethal. Oh. Um, by Paul Coelho. Or Coelho, maybe. So, um... Coelho. Nope. That's not it at all. <laughs> So the first one um, is pretty self-explanatory. Um, once a year, go someplace you've never been before. That you don't have to think about at all. That's by the Dalai Lama. And then these all tie in. Last one, we travel not to escape life, but for life to escape us. Um, and the reason you know I chose these three is um, I think when you travel, like if you go to someplace new, um, like Jamie and I might have a trip that we do at the end of the summer for maybe ma- maybe um but when you go someplace you've never seen before all your senses are heightened you're looking at stuff that you've never seen before you're listening you know even sounds when you go into different cities are different smells um and i think that there's something about always having your senses um elevated that really gives you a, a fulfilling sense of life that you know you're not just in one place at the same you know constantly there's something about you know letting your eyes see something new every day you know driving somewhere and seeing new it, an, an ocean isn't just an ocean there's different if you come to the central coast you will see palm trees in pismo beach and you'll see half an hour north you'll see fucking pine trees or it looks like there's so much different things when you, to travel and i just think it really is um uh, a part for life not to escape us so i just really liked all those mm-hmm. um and um, yeah, that's all I got. So sweet. Anything you want to add before? I'm hungry. Nope, that's what I was about to say. <laughs> I knew I'm it. I'm hungry. So um, where are we gonna go? Where are we gonna go? Station up at? I don't know. I don't know. You choose. Somewhere where we can sit and we have a table and food. 
Cool. All right. All right. Well, everybody, um, we hope you guys had a good weekend. Um, let us know what your favorite or saddest part of Pixar is. Let us know. Rank them. Do whatever the hell you want or got to do. So, um, hope you all have a good weekend. Um, we will see you all next week. And, yeah, I got nothing else. Yeah. Be babe. I mean. All right, guys. All right. We love you. Thank you. Word. Take care. <laughs>